great Canadian talk show. Well, there's only a couple of watts, but I brought the truth to everyone within three blocks of the west side of campus. No way! Yes way! And now, let's get right down to business with Marty Gold. This week, quickly, quickly, the provincial budget. You know, I remember when we when there would be media coverage of provincial budgets, and there was a lot of um, minutia examined in the course of those budgets. Uh, in particular, you know, I go back to the NDP years, whether it's under Greg, well, Selinger was the finance minister, and then Selinger uh, as premier, uh, serving as finance minister um, under Gary Dewar. And you'd hear all the minutia of the taxes that uh, like, remember when all of a sudden they started taxing all sorts of services, legal services and haircuts over a certain amount. And uh, my God, I remember going back to Howard Pauly's day, uh, probably 86 or 87, when uh, they decided to start taxing meals over $5. And suddenly every sandwich in town, sandwich lunch was being billed at $4.99 on the, on the, uh, you know, on your chit. Um, You didn't hear any of that with this uh, Manitoba budget announced this week, because there was evidently no tax hikes that, of any consequence that I've been able to determine, no adjustments. Uh, Tom Broadbeck, writing a column entitled Desperate Times, call for out-of-character vote-seeking measures. Um, but interesting in this, it's chock full of heavy spending in healthcare, education, justice, and most other, most other departments. It includes significant tax relief and tax credits. I'll talk about that in a second. It has something for everyone, it is as predicted. The Hail Mary of all Hail Mary budgets and then what does Tom Broadbeck say? Overall, it's a decent budget. <laughs> it has the right mix of investments in key areas while providing Manitobans with tax relief. Although the government is borrowing $363 million to pay for tax cuts, which Broadbeck says is troubling. Uh, the fiscal blueprint is not what Manitobans could expect from the PCs. If they were given a third mandate for that, Manitobans would have to look to previous budgets, including party leader Heather Stephenson's first budget as premier last year. Uh, now, he does note uh, that she continued the legacy of Brian Pallister tax cuts, accelerated deficit reduction over sustainable funding of frontline services. Uh, he notes, however, that uh, wait times for hospital procedures remain above pre-pandemic levels. Uh, talks about $10 a day child care, but, uh, you know, good luck finding a spot. Uh, that, of course, is attributable to uh, an influx of Trudeau, as we put it where I come from, owing to multiple years of operating freezes, grant freezes, child care carriers. You've got this gap in terms of available spaces, etc. cetera. Um, he said the Tories under both Pallister and Stephenson have been obsessed with balancing the books and cutting taxes at the expense of all other things government should be doing. Whew. Boy, has Tom Broadbeck ever changed, eh? <laughs> now, the Tories, he admits, plan to uh, balance the books over two terms, he says. The task of cleaning up the fiscal mess left by the previous NDP government, which plunged Manitoba in a record debt and deficits during good economic times, was daunting. The Tories told Manitobans they're going to do it slowly and carefully. Uh, while revenues were uh, reduced by $2 billion a year, he said, ideologically driven, he calls it reckless. Um, not really delved into too deeply in this column by Broadbeck and the Free Press is the, the interruption of pandemic, of the pandemic, into the uh, government budget planning. Uh, and so one thing that we've seen is the rise in the personal, um, uh, what's it called, uh, the personal allowance uh, uh, for your uh, marginal tax rate, right, above which, the, you know, a certain amount of tax-free income, and then if that, you get dinged. Uh, and that has gone up from, and I thought it was over twelve thousand dollars. I, I was informed um, a little while ago it was actually eleven thousand something, high high eleven thousands, but it's now up to fifteen thousand, which uh, I'm told is uh, something that was the goal of the Pallister administration and carried over by Heather Stephenson for a period of time that they wanted to bring the personal exempt, exemption levels up. That's something the NDP government was just loath to do, and that is the best form of 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 tax relief. Uh, the best form of putting money in people's pockets is, in fact, by raising that personal exemption level. Uh, Broadbeck concluding, Stephenson is hoping Manitobans can find it in their hearts to forget the past six years and consider only the present. It's unlikely she'll find a receptive audience. <laughs> really? Now, that's all interesting uh, because 
what else had Tom Broadbeck said before the budget? And, and keep in mind, he called this one. Overall, it's a decent budget, has the right mix of investments in key areas, uh, which includes trying to revive, uh, further revive the mining sector, which I'm all in favor of, while providing Manitobans with tax relief. Oh, what did Tom Broadbeck say um, at the end of February? Tory's pre-election playbook stinks of desperation. Busting open piggy banks seven months before austerity battered voters go to the polls is tried and true political buffoonery. Hmm, the term buffoonery seems diametrically opposed at odds with saying that's a decent budget with the right mix of investments in key areas. Huh. And uh, Broadback, of course, in February, saying Hail, Hail Marys rarely work in politics. It's terrible policy. It's the Hail Mary of Hail Marys. Feast or famine spending is the worst way to run government. Jacking up spending on the even election won't reverse the damage. Oh, boy. Tom Broadbeck just turns himself inside out. And then when he gets, as you see, there's a budget that he can't actually argue with, but he still finds fault with it. I'm sure I'm sure the king of fake news, Dan Lett, uh, has similar points of view with regards to the budget. Uh, I just found it remarkable that unlike every other budget you ever hear about, nobody talks about gas tax going up. Nobody talks about cigarette tax going up. Nobody talks about booze taxes going up. No, they talk about not much. Not a lot of immediate personal downside effect that I've been able to figure out for anybody in this budget. Uh, now, whereas we, we've seen the predictable re response from the MGU, the unions, geshraying, as we say in Yiddish, and belly aching and, and, and such things, I do want to take note of the commentary uh, provided, the review of the budget provided by Dougal Lamont, the Manitoba Liberals. He says the PCs are trying to buy back the trust for Manitobans with a big promise budget that will not make up for their seven years of cuts and freezes. They'll just buy their way out of trouble. How can you trust the PCs to fix edu health, education, or infrastructure when they just spent seven years trashing those sectors? Now, Manitoba liberals, according to this press release, say there are a series of issues unaddressed in this rush budget, which shows the PCs are still in touch with the needs of Manitobans. What's the first thing they mention? There's no mention of reconciliation. Honest to God. No mention of returning $338 million the PCs and NDP governments illegally took from First Nations children under CFS. That's actually uh, a pretty good point that, in my opinion, Lamont makes. Uh, but then his focus is entirely on NDP turf. The worst discrimination against Indigenous people in Canada is in provincial systems, healthcare, education, justice, and CFS. There is no mention of any of these. Bo calls it borrowing for billionaires and says the property tax rebates uh, are causing the province to borrow $453 million at ever rising tax rates. He also claims, the, the Lamont and the Liberals, that the PC budget blames people who are homeless living in poverty with addictions for crime when they're my, more likely to be victims of crime. Well, uh, that's not the way it works on the streets of St. Boniface. Maybe Dougal Lamont's got to walk the streets here a little more often, I can tell you. Um, makes a point, well, there's no plan to train and attract nurses and doctors. There's no plan to keep them in Manitoba. I have to tell you, so what else is new? We, why, we've been training nurses and doctors to leave this province to go to other places for decades. And so Lamont is banging the same old drum. Uh Says the PCs pad of the budget by recycling old announcements on schools, but which don't actually provide education. Crams in a quote from Cindy Lamoureux, who gets along with her leader, Dougal Lamont, like cats and dogs on a surly day. Talking about wait lists and uh, Dr. John Gerard making a point about uh, the wait list for even get an appointment for diagnostic services like MRIs. Uh, and uh, also called for an end to mandatory overtime. This is more of the same we've heard for decades and hasn't worked, said Lamont. Let me tell you what hasn't worked for decades. The Manitoba Liberal Party convincing voters that they have any kind of a platform that is an alternative in any way, shape, or form to whatever's been offered up by, in sequence, Howard Pauly, Gary, Philman, Gary, Dewar, Greg Selinger, and Brian Pallister. It's a pretty deep hole the Liberals have to climb out of. They got a lot of ink. Uh, and, and I've given them coverage in the past, election coverage too, but not hearing anything that isn't way off in left field 
from the Manitoba Liberals, and it might be time for them to rethink how they position themselves in the marketplace of Manitoba political ideas. My thoughts on that subject. Do you have a comment, story tip, or want to advertise or support the Great Canadian Talk Show podcast? Email tgcts1 at gmail.com. Join the Facebook group or follow us on Twitter at TGCTS. You have the power. Now, there's more Tom Broadbeckery in the Friday paper uh, that uh, column came out actually as I was recording that segment. This time he's giving policy advice, uh, Dr. Tom's prescription for the NDP. And it's kind of hard to hard to fathom. Fiscal star is aligning for canoe if NDP wins fall election. And then he wanders through all sorts of factors. And then he has some policy ideas. The payroll tax, the cut to the payroll tax should be the first to go. The NDP could gut that with little if any public backlash. They could also cancel the $453 million education property tax rebate. And an NDP government could use at least some of those proceeds instead of borrowing money for the rebate checks. An NDP government could use some of those proceeds to reduce the projected deficit. Canceling the rebate checks, balancing the books quicker, would be an opportunity for the NDP, writes Tom Broadbeck, to out fiscal conservative the Tories. Now, what did we say on, like, was it last week, two weeks ago, I think? The one thing you never hear about. And now Tom Broadbeck is, ex, ex, he's trying to cheerlead the New Democratic Party into becoming something that we said you never hear about. Nobody ever used the term. It's because it doesn't exist. You hear about red Tories in the old days. I don't know what a left-wing Tory is called nowadays, though generally I think they're just called a progressive conservative in Manitoba uh, in terms of uh, being in cabinet. This is like NDP shillery. Because what Tom Broadbeck is suggesting is that Wab Canoe become, you ready for it? A right-wing New Democrat. He wants the NDP to out-fiscal conservative the conservatives. That could easily be incorporated, he says, in a future NDP uh, budgets. He talks about the $72 million one-time top-up uh, for the Canada Health Transfer likely to disappear next year, he says. Canceling the property tax rebate and the proposed payroll tax cut to eliminate the deficit earlier. While boosting spending in priority areas would be good politics and good policy. Not that Tom Broadbeck would ever run for public office. Now, what's also interesting that I noticed, here's his, his prescription, Broadbeckery. Raise taxes, spend more money on unions. Cut the deficit that they've pilloried the conservative government for having done over the course of the last, I guess it's seven years, almost eight years, right? <sighs> Can you imagine the NDP voting against a budget that cuts personal income taxes by over $300 million, hikes healthcare spending by about $670 million, and the NDP is going to try to run on the base of, no, this is a bad budget. We're going to vote against it. You should vote for us because we're right-wing New Democrats. The Hail Mary. Of, that would be the Hail Mary of Hail Marys, I would say. Remember the, the NDP edge in polling went from about 11% down to about, I think it was down to five to five and a half, six percent last time around. It could be falling even more. Now, one other thing that I noticed, something that you usually wouldn't notice, I'm cutting and pasting over links to stories for preparation for the uh, episode description and such things. So the uh, column that, uh, that uh, was the subject of segment number one, Okay, desperate times call for out-of-character vote-seeking measures. The URL, in other words, with the free press, and it's an opinion column. Remember, writers don't write the headlines, the, uh, right, for, uh, for any, pretty much any columns. It's done by the, the newspaper itself, the desk, whatever. So Tom Broadbeck may have said a lot of things that we found interesting or don't necessarily agree with, but he doesn't write the headlines as far as we know and certainly not on opinion columns. This column ran, Desperate Times Call for Out-of-Character Vote-Seeking Measures. That was the column about the budget. The Free Press slugged this story, and it shows up in the URL. The original headline, slugged by the Free Press, remember that one time the bully wanted to be your friend. Hmm. Now, let's talk about who bullies are. People say Brian Pallister was a bully. I'd agree. People don't often mention Gary Dewar was a bully. I can tell you he was. 
Greg Selinger was a bully. Nobody questions that. Howard Pauley, a little bit. Gary Philman, yeah. You know who I've never heard called a bully? Heather Stephenson. So the newspaper of record was quite prepared to try to push this narrative that Stephenson is a bully because she's inherited Pallister's, uh, uh, to some extent, the Pallister record. And yet here she is returning over $300 million to the pa pockets of taxpayers, increasing spending across government departments by an average of, I think it's 12%. And somehow, not even Tom Broadback used the word bully. But the free press is, so you, you can see in advance where this has the potential to go in terms of how the provincial election will continue to unfold. Can you imagine? Heather Stephens is a bully. Well, I'm going to do a right-wing new Democrat. Fun, fun, fun. I can't wait till Spirit of Kenny hears this one.